When Prusa released their Mark IVs upgrade kit, initially I wasn't sure whether it was worth it, and I suspect that was the case for a lot of people. I already have a Mark IV that prints like an absolute dream, and I wasn't sure if I'd actually need a lot of the performance enhancements that the Mark IVs was offering. But, given the low price and the fact that there will be a Mark IVs to Core 1 conversion kit next year, I took the dive and upgraded one of my printers to the Mark IVs. The upgrade experience itself was really nice and straightforward and I quite enjoyed it. The box includes all the parts you'll need and there's a really detailed online guide similar to other Prusa printers and it walks you through all the steps in detail. The main features of the upgrade kit include some PCCF printed parts which are stronger and more heat resistant. There's also a new injection molded cover for the LCD screen which is a really nice cosmetic upgrade and it gives the printer a bit more of a premium feel. And then of course the main upgrade is the large part cooling fan which is supposed to improve printer performance. So in this video I'm going to compare the performances of both printers to help you decide whether you should upgrade to a Mark IVs or not. I've designed a six round contest to put different parts of these printers performances to the test. Firstly we're going to have a benchy test just to check for overall print quality, followed by an overhang test, bridging test, stringing test. We're also going to compare print times and last but certainly not least we're going to compare the noise levels between both printers. And to keep this a fair competition we're going to use the same spool of filament, we're going to use the same models to test everything and we're going to use stock profiles for printer and filament in Prusa Slicer. We're going to use matte white PLA so we can see all the little details and get a really accurate idea of how things are printing. We're going to be using the same profiles for layer height, filament and we're only going to be changing between the 4S profile and the Mark IV profile. I'm going to be getting three different test models from printables as I'm showing here and I'll have a link to each model in the description below in case you want to have a go as well. And with everything ready, it was time to get the models sliced, get the print beds cleaned, load up our filament and start printing. And here are all the finished prints, now it's time to put things to the test and see how they've turned out. So looking at both Benji's side by side, there's virtually nothing to separate between the two. Both printers printed excellent Benji's and the only difference that I noticed was that on the Mark IVs Benji, there was a little bit of bridging failure. That could be down to anything. But aside from that, both really well printed and impossible to separate. And now looking at the bridging test, again there's virtually nothing to separate between the two prints. As you'd expect, the quality of the bridges diminishes as the bridges get longer, but I can't really say that any one printer performed better than the other. And really, in this particular test, I was expecting the Mark IVs to do better than the Mark IV due to the large cooling fan, but again they look almost identical, so I'm going to call this one a draw as well. Now this is the main test that I was really interested to do, and that's the overhang test. The Mark IVs is supposed to print better overhangs, again due to that large cooling fan. But as you guys can see from the results, again there's very little to separate between the two. Both printers performed really well and then started to struggle around the 70 degree mark, which again is excellent on its own, but I did expect the Mark IVs to perform better than the Mark IV, but again I'm going to call this one a draw. And last but certainly not least we have the stringing test. There are lots of factors that can contribute to stringing so take this one with a pinch of salt. 
However, in terms of the result, I'm going to call this one a tie as well. I couldn't make out any differences between the two outcomes. This next section is where I compare how loud each printer goes when it's in full swing. I set my decibel meter at a two foot distance from the build plate and the maximum recorded reading for the Mark IV was 64 decibels and for the 4S it was 61, so it's a very small margin. Numbers aside though, I'm quite happy to have both printers running in the background as they are fairly quiet, I don't really find them distracting. I've included the original audio so you can have a listen for yourself. So here is a table comparing and contrasting the different print times for all the test models that I did across the two printers. And on paper, the Mark IV-S was quicker in three out of the four tests. But if you have a closer look at the numbers, there wasn't really much of a difference in the print time. So take that for what it's worth. In my books, even this test, you can pretty much call it a tie. So in conclusion, I can say that from my experience, there's not a massive difference between the Mark IV and the Mark IV-S. I would recommend upgrading to a Mark IV-S in two scenarios. One, if you've got a printer much older than the Mark IV, I think the performance upgrades you'd get would feel big enough for you to feel like you're getting a good return on investment. And number two, if you're planning to upgrade to the core one once it releases. Right, and that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and check out some of my other videos on the channel. And I'll see you all next time.